All right, so I'll go up here, verse, let's, uh, verse explorer. I'm gonna create a new verse file here. And I'm just gonna call it distance device or whatever. So first thing we need to include some stuff. First one's gonna be spatial math because we're going to need access to some math. And then for we need the UI. And then we also want fortnite.com slash characters. And here I'm going to also include colors. Yes, there is a colors module if you guys didn't know. To start, we're gonna need two functions. The first one is going to be our init UI, which is going to initialize our actual HUD UI thing. So what I'm gonna do is create a function. I'm gonna do player of type player dot. And here we type in the name of the function and I'm gonna call it init UI. And here we don't need anything void. And I'm just gonna put these just for now, just so I don't get any errors, but we'll come back to this function later on. And similarly, we need a, another function that's going to update our distance widget. So here I'm actually gonna, going to do fort character of type fort underscore character dot, I'm gonna do update distance. And here we're going to be taking a text block of type text underscore block. And then you wanna add the suspends void equals like this. And this is because we need fortnite.com slash UI as well here. So UI, that should go. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna be using a text block. That's the thing that's gonna actually render our distance. So here, I'm gonna start with this function. I'm gonna create a loop here. Here, I'm going to call sleep. And here you wanna pass in how often your text is going to update. If you want it to be smooth, you would do a low number such as 0 0.2 or something low like that. But I'm just going to go with 0 0.4, just because I think that's it. So now we need the actual the actual vertical distance that our player is currently at. Luckily, we have this fourth character already here. So I'm gonna do the distance vertical. It's going to be equal to our fourth character dot get transform dot translation. Now this translation is going to return a vector but we only want the vertical component, which is going to be our Z axis. So from this vector, we just do dot Z. Now, two things. One, this is going to return our Z in centimeters. So if you want meters, for example, like I want, what you would want to do is just simply divide this by 100.0, and that's going to give you your uh, distance in meters. And two, this is going to return a floating point value, which is a decimal. If you want a decimal, cool, you can leave it like that, but I'm going to need a whole number or want a whole number. So we need to round this down. And to do that, we first create an if statement, if, and we're, I'm gonna do rounded, I guess, distance is going to be equal to floor. And then we pass in this distance, vertical meters like that. And then we can do stuff in here. Now this floor is going to round down to the nearest whole number. If you want to round up, you can, instead of doing floor, you can do seal, which stands for a ceiling. But I'm going to do floor, but you can do either. So now that we have this, we need to update this text block with whatever this value is. We can do that using the text block dot set text function. Now this set text function, if you try to pass in, in a string like this, for example, like this, you're getting an error because we need to pass in a message variable. So let me comment this real quick. We're gonna create a message variable up here. So I'm gonna do UI text. You need to add this localizes thing because we're going to be converting a string to a message. So that's why we need this localizes thing. And then open up parentheses and here you're gonna type in value of type string and then type, it's gonna be of type message. We open double quotes and then put in these braces and in here we pass in value. So because we want here to specify whatever the value is, we need to add this value thing, which is a type of string. That means that when we put this UI text in here, we can then specify what the message is going to be by passing that in here. And you can see that's why we assign it like this. So now we can go down here and uncomment this. And instead of this, we can pass in UI text. And in here we pass in our, this I think in the only up map, they have something like this, like two dashes or whatever and followed by m we still need to pass in this value here the rounded distance so similar to how we did it up here we do squiggly braces or these brace things and then we just pass in our rounded distance this is telling our program that whatever goes inside here instead of actually typing literally this left bracket r o u n d and then right bracket 
this is going to get whatever the value is in here. So whatever that distance and put that inside of here. So that's it for that function. Now we need to actually do our init UI function. So firstly, we need a place to store our widget, which is going to be a canvas. So let's make a new canvas type canvas equals canvas. Okay. So here we're creating a new canvas called canvas. Uh, you can call it new canvas or whatever, but this canvas needs to be initialized with what's known as slots and slots are basically spaces where we can store our widget. In this case, we want to store a text block this thing right here. So because we can store more than one widget, we this slots thing needs to be an array like this. And then inside of this array, we can specify a canvas slot like this. Now, firstly, we need a widget, which we have not created yet. So before this, I'm actually going to uncomment this out like this. Oops. Okay. So for this canvas, we're going to create a new text widget. So it's going to be a text widget of type text underscore block. This is going to render our text, our actual distance text. So text underscore block and text underscore block. Now, by default, this is going to be color black. The text is going to be black color, which can be a little hard to see. So what I, I like to do is do default text color colon equals. And then because we've included this colors module module up here, we can name the colors dot white, for example. And then after that, we can put the, for the widget, we can put this text, which is like that. And you can see that goes away. So we've added the widget to our canvas, but now we would like to position the widget. So to do, to do that, we create a new field here called anchors. Anyway, so for anchors, we do anchors, we type in this anchors keyword and then open these uh, braces. And here, firstly, we type in the minimum colon equals. And then here we need a vector too, which is going to be our actual position of our widget thing. And this takes in an X and a Y value. Now these X and Y values are clamped between zero and 1.0. So between zero and one where zero for the X is going to be the very left of your screen. And one is going to be the very right of your screen. So horizontally, I want my thing to be centered. So I'm going to do put 0 0.5. And then the Y is the same as the X. The only thing is that zero is at your very top of the screen. And then one would be at the very bottom. So if I want my thing to be somewhere near the bottom, I would put 0 0.9 or whatever. That's the minimum. Then we type in comma and then maximum colon equals. And we can just copy this same vector too, like this. Now we need to actually add this to our player UI. So what you can do is do if player UI colon equals get player UI of the player here, so player, and then we might as well get the fourth character, which is player get fourth character like that. So if we can get the player's UI, then we can do player UI dot add widget and we add our new canvas like that. And then finally we call spawn and then we can do fourth character dot update distance. And then we just pass in our text block, which is the thing we created up here. So text widget. So that new text widget is going to be updated and that's going to be unique to every player. All right, that's it for that. Now all we need to do is just call these functions here. So in here in our on begin, we want to do for player in get play space dot get player. So for every player, we want to do player dot init UI like that. And that's pretty much it. So let's see if that works in and then go up here, build rest code and then control space to bring up to bring up your content drawer and then go up here in your creative devices folder. And I am going to go here in the distance device, drag that out and we don't need to set anything. So that's all good. I'm just going to build the first code again. And then I'm just going to launch a session and let's test it out. And you can see here, we have the thing here. So if I go up two meters, four meters, seven, as always, I'll leave the code in the description. I hope this was helpful and yeah.